Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for making the time to come to this last presentation for the day. Uh, I feel like I've scored a bit of the unlucky dip. <laughs> um, not because of you lovely people here, but because it's a difficult act to be the last one on a very full day. Uh, today, our presentation will occur in two parts. On the Skype line from Lyon in France is my colleague Anthony Navarro from Price Systems International, who will be doing a live demonstration of the tools QDV and BI in exhibiting savings of time and effort in tender evaluation, evaluating both the tenders against each other and also against the should cost of a major capital equipment project. So our agenda for today is to talk a little bit about price systems and synergy, just to give you some context of why I'm here. To look at the global solution offered by Price Systems International supporting the capability lifecycle as it is used in defence. Then to demonstrate QDV and BI in improved tender comparison for you and evaluation. And then to take some questions and answers if we have time. So let's talk a little bit about Synergy Group and Price Systems. So Price Systems International was established 40 years ago and specialises in cost estimation and cost management throughout the life cycle. They have a long history of success in a unique position in the market and are utilised extensively in industry overseas, in industry Australia, and also in the UK Ministry of Defence, France Ministry of Defence, Germany, Italy, China, and plus others. Synergy Group is a consulting firm located in Canberra. We specialise in supporting our government clients to deliver solutions to their issues and provide them with value add outcomes. The operating position for Price Systems International is to partner with an in-country partner who has a deep and extensive understanding of the environment in which the implementation of their solutions will occur. In this way, they can tailor both the implementation and the solution to the client's need, and also make sure that half a hemisphere away, their clients are well supported. In August of this year, I was privileged to work with Eve Manukian from Price Systems International and Anthony Navarro from PSI to demonstrate to the Department of Defence how their global solution, that is their suite of PSI products, could support the capability life cycle in defence. So to set the context for that, let me talk a little bit to, with you about the capability life cycle process and what the objective of each stage is. So in our first stage, where we talk about strategy and concepts. This is a very early opportunity to start thinking about the art of the possible in delivering a capability outcome. This is where we start designing the force and exploring what the force of the future will look like and what potential solutions may be offered up to actually fulfil the need. During this stage, we're looking to identify a high level budget that's in the right order of magnitude to become an integrated investment program provision for the capability to be acquired and sustained throughout the life cycle. During risk mitigation and requirement setting, a lot of work is undertaken to further refine what those options might look like, to further refine the cost estimates, to better understand the scope, to evaluate and start to plan for the risks to be managed and mitigated, and really to start exploring more in depth the feasibility of the solutions that we're potentially considering. Gate zero formally kicks off the process. And during there is a two stage approval process, which can be tailored to a single stage depending upon the nature of the capability being acquired. So leading from gate zero to gate one, we're further looking to actually define what might be the potential cost. And by that, I mean the full life cycle cost of the capability, further refine the requirements, understand risk, define the schedule, make sure that we really start to understand what we're trying to deliver. This is further then refined between gate one and gate two, 
and more usually through a tender evaluation process or a foreign military sales process. Today we're going to focus on tender evaluation because when you acquire things by foreign military sales, it isn't a competitive evaluation. Uh, we're buying from our allies and so the price we are offered is generally the price we get. Beyond gate two, when the, success, the selection of the successful tenderer has been made and we have entered into contract, the price system in the international suite is very much focused on cost management throughout the rest of the life cycle. So how do we actually manage our costs during the acquisition phase to ensure that we're going to deliver on budget? And then through the sustainment phase to make sure that we're optimising the dollars available to provide the capability in its operational state as intended. So when you look at the PSI suite, it comprises four parts. The first of those parts is the backbone of the suite called EPIC. EPIC has the ability to digitalise the processes you use to move through your business and to control those processes. So for example, in the proof of concept that we did for defence, we focused on going from gate zero to gate one and we modelised all of the processes such as the committee process and the approvals process, the interaction of the suite of tools between those processes, but also the interaction with the stakeholders and the other documentation. So if you think about EPIC as the control and the central storage repository. The first tool considered when we're looking actually in our strategy and concepts is a tool called True Facet. So True Facet and all of the tools in the PSI suite have been developed from 40 years of historical data collection in major capital equipment projects for defence across the world. This data is cleansed and then it is used to develop parametric models to estimate the different systems that you may wish to acquire. So early on, True Facet is very useful for establishing a broad parametric estimate of what the full life cycle cost will be. So to assist with setting that early budget provision. Because of the relationship between TrueFacet and EPIC, this means that the information that is approved through TrueFacet and decided to be the agreed target is then stored in EPIC for future reference. So the use of EPIC gives us a full audit trail across the life cycle. Um, I'm sure if anyone here like me has worked in defence, Sometimes you get to gate one and think, where was that gate zero estimate? Uh-oh, we don't necessarily have it. So it answers a lot of the questions about how do we actually have an audit trail across the life cycle that helps us understand the decisions made, the trade-offs made, and how we got from what we originally estimated to what the end result was. Moving into the risk mitigation and requirements phase, True planning is used to set, again, a more parametric estimate, but working from bottom up and using historical data to actually give us a more refined estimate of the cost using a detailed work breakdown structure that accords with Mill Handbook 881C, which is the internationally accepted standard for work breakdown structures. Moving into the tender evaluation plan stage between gate one and gate zero, we use true planning to provide an indication of the should cost. Is everyone familiar with the concept of should cost? No? Yes? No. Okay. So the should cost is the developed cost estimate of what the system should cost based on the previous historical data and the current ind industry indices. So it gives us a really good estimate of where we think that tended price should land. This is particularly useful, for example, in the case of the Italian MOD, where often they only have one respondent to the tender. So it gives the MOD the ability to say, the should cost is our line in the sand. What have we been replied in tender with? And how do they compare? Where are the areas we should be negotiating against? So it gives the UK MOD a bit more leverage around their tender evaluation process. So in this phase, when we are conducting tender evaluation, we use true planning to develop the should cost and QDV and BI to both collect the tender data, sort the tender data 
and provide an apples to apples comparison of that tender data. And then also the ability to compare that to the should cost to identify major areas of differences so that you can then identify again where you might negotiate, where you would go back and ask more questions, and where it might reveal that perhaps something was wrong in the scope or the way we wrote requirements. So it's both sides of the story. One, the questions for industry, but also the questions for, the, for whoever issued the RFQTS. Moving through the rest of the life cycle, QDV and BI are used to collect the actuals, feed those back into the system, and then re-forecast the cost to complete and also the cost to sustain. Again, all of these tools are linked back to EPIC as the control of the process and approval mechanism, but also as the storage of the audit trail for what was agreed at the different decision points. To give you that full life cycle view of the decisions made and the cost as it has evolved over time. What I'm going to do now is talk, hand you over to Anthony Navarro from Price Systems International, who's going to talk you through the QDV and BI demonstration and show you just how this works in the tender evaluation phase. Just bear with me, I'll just flick us over to Anthony. Hello, Anthony. Hello, Stacey. You Good have... afternoon, everyone. Can you hear me? Everybody can hear you, Anthony. So if you could take control and share your screen with us, please. Can you hear me well? Yes? Yes, we can hear you well. OK. So we're and ready. Can you see my screen now? I can see your screen now. OK, perfect. So thank you, Stacey. And good afternoon, everyone, again. Uh, so I'm Anthony Navarro, and I'm a project manager for Price System International. Um, I'm supporting the pre-sales activity in Price System International, and uh, as well as the implementation phases uh, within our big accounts. And today, uh, following the presentation of Stacy, I will perform two demonstrations. So the first one will be uh, focused uh, to um, for an application to evaluate the tenders coming from uh, the different suppliers. <clears throat> so I will start to explain in, in this uh, slide what will be the demonstration script of this application. So I will, uh, I will show how to define an Excel structure for tender responses, uh, which will be uh, defined by the government, and uh, how the exchange between the, the institution, the government, and the industry is performed. And uh, then I will show you what the, the tender response uh, look like when it is populated in, in the Excel file from the supplier. And then how, how can we import easily the, tender, the different tender responses coming from the industry uh, into the QDV comparison framework? And how do we use the business intelligence uh, reporting engine that is uh, embedded in QDV? to have the ability to compare uh, apples to apples, as uh, Stacy was explaining, and uh, as well as uh, comparing those tender responses with the shoot cost that has been performed by the government. And it, there will be um, another demonstration script uh, afterwards uh, about uh, cost management, but I will come back to the slide after this uh, tender evaluation uh, demonstration. To explain you, uh, theoretically how it works. So first I will show you the, the Excel template, uh, which is defined by, in this example, uh, the, the different generic work breakdown structure, uh, which is defined by the, the government. So you can see that we have some columns that are already defined in the Excel template, and it's a structured uh, spreadsheet, so we cannot modify everything. Uh, some cells are locked. Uh, to, have the, to give the ability to the suppliers to, to give their tender response in a, in a structured way. So on the left-hand side, from column A until column F, you can see that we have the work breakdown structure with the yellow, yellow cells. This is an example of a, a, ten, a request for proposal for uh, Earth observation satellites. So we have all the different uh, 
work rate down structure. This example is based on the American work rate down structure, the 881C, mill standard. And in front, uh, in front of those three columns, we have the, from column G to column L, we have the detailed supplier proposal or the detailed estimate coming from the supplier. And those columns give the ability to the supplier to insert the detailed activities to perform the, the, the Earth observation satellites. So we have some activity description, the cost, the total number of hours, what the, the units of the activity, and the quantity per unit, and so on. So when it is, uh, so this template is sent to the industry when the request for proposal is, uh, is opened. And when it comes back from the industry, uh, an opening the tender response is received from, from the supplier. So in front of each work package at the lowest level, the, the supplier has inserted, I will zoom a bit to make it clear, uh, has inserted the different activities in front of each low level work package with the total number of hours, the quantity and so on. So based on this uh, tender response coming from the industry, now I will show you how to import this tender response in QDV, uh, in the QDV tender uh, comparison framework. Sorry. So if I close, close this, and if I open the QDV converter, so we have a, a bridge platform, QDV converter, which will allow uh, the government to, to import uh, easily the tender responses in the QDV framework, comparison framework, sorry. So if I open an estimate and I select the supplier tender that we have just seen in the Excel, QDV will recognize the Excel file automatically. So you, you can see that we have the, the last Excel file that I, I've just uh, shown. What I will do now is to select the template of comparison. It's just to load the the, diff the structure of the of the comparison, I would say, the different fields that are, have been defined by the by the government. And because the, the Excel spreadsheet uh, was defined by the government, and the QDV structure is all, is as well uh, a, a structured database, we have the ability to recognize the different columns from the from the tender automatically with. Uh, with a column mapping file, I would say. And when I, when I open it, automatically QDV recognizes the different columns you can see on the, on the top of the screen. So now I will recognize the different levels of the work breakdown structure with a function that is here on the top. And automatically, QDV, you can see that it recognizes the different levels of the work breakdown structure. And the last thing I have to, to, to do is just to recognize the last level and, and the detailed activity that the, the supplier has inserted in the blue cells that you can see on the right hand side. is done. So now I will check that everything is okay. I just have to exclude this row which is a, a red cell and now I can check and build the QDV file and I will just create a new tender, uh, tender response with a fourth supplier because we have already created uh, before this demonstration three uh, tender responses coming from uh, different uh, suppliers. And we'll take only where the row are identified. So by, by check, checking and building this uh, QDV estimate or QDV uh, tender response, QDV converter uh, has created a new uh, QDV file and I will show you the, the import of this Excel file into the QDV uh, comparison framework.
So this is the file, the tender response in, in the QDV framework. So we have the work gradient structure based on the uh, MIL standard 881C, as you as you have seen in the in the in the Excel file. And you remember we have identified the different levels of the work gradient structure. It's just to create the different uh, levels that you can see on the left hand side here on, of the structure. And if I go into the minutes, uh, the minutes are the detailed estimate coming from the from the supplier, and you can see the detailed activities from the supplier that we have seen in the Excel spreadsheet. So I can now calculate the total costs automatically is calculated from QDV. And what we can do now is to save this file and I will load and I will open the comparison framework, which is this file. And QDV gives us the ability now to launch um, a function to compare different offers. When I click on this button, QDV gives me the ability to, to select the different tenders. So we just browse the, the folder and select the folder where my, my different uh, tender responses are located. So I have four tender responses, as you have seen before. We have the ability as well to select a shoot cost file. So in this case, before the demonstration, I have prepared um, a shoot cost, uh, as uh, Stacy was explaining, a uh, shoot cost that has been performed in true planning. So we won't go into a, a detailed demonstration of true planning, but uh, true planning is a parametric estimate which allows to perform a parametric estimate uh, based on technical information coming from uh, the suppliers, for example. And so I will select the shoot cost file, which is this one. And finally, I can select the, the, the report where I want to perform the comparison. So I have selected the four tender responses, the shoot cost, and the, and the report. And when I will click on OK, you will see um, a progress bar that will go and will open in the background the different tender suppliers, uh, tender responses, the shoot costs, and push all the data because QDV is a SQLite database. Uh, it will create data sources, mix them, and, and push all the data into the report to perform the comparison. So when I click on OK, you can see that the progress is ongoing. We are opening the different files, the different tender responses from coming from the different suppliers. And QDV creates automatically a report for us. So you can see based on, it's a simple report, but we could imagine to have different uh, and other reports, more complex. Based on the work breakdown structure, we have the ability to compare, I don't know if it's clear enough, if it's uh, big enough. We have the ability to compare the shoot costs with the different tender uh, coming from the suppliers. It's important to point out that we've only done a small portion of the WBS, just to give you a flavour for it. So, okay. Uh, do you want me to, to go to the next demonstration, Stacey? Yes, please, Anthony. Okay. So we just come back to the, to the slides and to explain the, the next demonstration script. And how do we use QDV to perform cost management? So based on the bill of material, which is uh, extracted from, um, from a database or from, uh, I will show you an example in, a, in an Excel spreadsheet. I will show you how to import in an automated way uh, an Excel-based bill of material to perform an estimate of this bill of material. And then how do we um, make an automated costing of this bill of material uh, by linking the different uh, reference or uh, re material reference uh, with the corporate database which is, which is centralized in the organization. And uh, in case of 
if one element of this data of this estimate is not costed, uh, how can we uh, perform the, the a manual costing, not in an automated way? And how can we manage the knowledge and capture the new knowledge that has been created to push the new information into the corporate database to, to have the ability to reuse this knowledge going forward? So first I will show you an example of a bill of material, a simple bill of material in an Excel spreadsheet. So we have here different columns. It's, it's a structured uh, spreadsheet as well. So we have the different uh, part numbers, description, uh, assembly, part ID, quantity, and some technical information. So in this example, we have uh, more than, uh, I think it's more than 130 elements in the bill of material. So based on this bill of material, I will uh, open a QDV template. <clears throat> okay. So we have different, I will not go into a, a detailed demonstration of QDV, but just to, to, to make it simple, we have a, um, an expanded WBS tab here on the, on the bottom, which allows to manage the work breakdown structure or a cost breakdown structure. And then in the minutes, we have the detailed estimate as, as we have seen for the, for the last demonstration. And if we go in the automation tab here on the top, we have the ability to have a, a function here to import a bill of material. So if I click on this uh, function, and if I uh, select the, the bill of material that I've just shown, and if I open it, you will see that QDV will automatically recognize for me uh, the different uh, levels of the bill, the bill of material, a bit like uh, in the last uh, demonstration of, as we have um, when we have clicked on the auto levels function. So QDV is recognizing the, the structure. You can see on the left hand side that uh, it, it is creating the, the structure of the bill of material and is inserting at the lowest level of each um, of each work package of the bill of material the, the list of the detailed uh, materials necessary to be costed. So as you, as you, as you have seen before, we have more than 130 lines. Uh, it, uh, it, uh, it uh, avoids for the, for the people uh, to perform a manual manipulation and, uh, and uh, errors when importing into the, into the platform. So QDV has created the bill of material. In this, in this example, it's an electronic uh, card bill of material. So we have the, the structure of the bill of material on the left-hand side here. And if I go into the minutes, you can see that in front of each uh, lowest level of the, of the structure, we have the different um, details in terms of material with the different part numbers associated. And if I click uh, in, the different, uh, in the different work package of the bill of material, we have the, the, the detailed list of material necessary. So now QDV, if I click on the calculate button here on the, at the bottom, QDV will perform a control of the bill of material that has been imported to just to have a sanity check that everything is ready to be costed. So when I click on calculate, you will see that some lines will, be, will uh, become yellow, some other lines will become uh, red. This, this is just to make sure that everything is okay. For the yellow lines, everything is okay. And for the red lines, for example, in this case, I'm missing the quantity of the material. So QDV is, is performing this sanity check automatically. When this is performed, we can, we can activate the second function here to import the articles from the database into the estimate. So QDV will perform an automated link between the database and will fulfill for me if, if one uh, reference is found in the database, it will fulfill for me the, the estimate with the cost per unit and with some technical information if I have in the database. So if I click on this second function and I select the database uh, you remember we said that we have a, a, a corporate centralized database. 
This is an example of a, of a centralized database. If I click on valid page, QDV will automatically create the link between this database and the estimate, which is here. And you will see that it's it's quite uh, it's a, it's a quick um, it's a quick import uh, based on the 100 uh, articles. We have import in this case we have imported 66 articles in in few seconds. And you will see that when I click on OK that some lines will change, some color of lines will will change, and will become white. This means that the, the articles have been costed. If I go on the, on the right hand side, you can see that we have imported the cost per unit for those articles. And for others, for example, if I go at the bottom for this one, for example, this means that we have not imported, they are still yellow. It means that this reference was not present and, and was not existing in, in the database. So what I will what I will do now is to perform an automated cost, uh, a manual costing of this uh, of this part uh, number, and I will insert the cost per unit manually in this column. And if I go on the right hand side, I, I can put some uh, some assumptions. For example, what is the reference quantity of this uh, cost per unit? Where does the information come from? If it comes from uh, the industry, if it comes from uh, an estimate, I will say that it's an estimate. And what is the, the economic condition of the costs? So in this case, 2019. And when I click on calculate, you will see that this line uh, will become white, which, mean, which will mean that QDV recognized that the, the costing has been performed and the cost information is created now. The aim now is to, to say to, to is to capture this knowledge newly created, to have the ability to reuse this information and this new estimate for future uh, for future estimates. As you can see on the top right of the window, we have a third function to add an article into the into the database. When I click on this function, I can select the database where I want to save all the the, the new articles created. And when I click on validate, QDB will browse the full estimate and the full bill of material and recognize the new, uh, art, uh, the new article costed. You can see that QDB has recognized one new article and added it to the database. And the last thing I would like to show with this demonstration is the capability of QDV to perform complex reporting. So if I go back to the expanded WBS, I didn't mention that we, can, we have the ability to perform uh, a versioning of the work breakdown structure of the bill of material or the estimate. Here we are in version C, as you can see on the, on the, at the bottom of the window. I can select the top uh, of the estimate. And if I go into the analytics, so the analytics is the business intelligence engine. Um, I can I can select. In this case, I would like to to compare the previous version, the version B, with this new version, version C. So I can go into the estimates and version. I can select both version B and C. And what I can do now is to launch a report. So QDV for me, when I click on build and display report, QDV will uh, open the two versions version B and C, will push the data into a data source, will mix all the, the information to, 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 to have a cleaning of the data, and will automatically push the data into, the, into a report. So it's compiling the report right now, and opening for me an automated report which I can save into a PowerPoint, for example, for management reviews or for, for something else. We have some information, for example, the, the exchange rate between euros and dollars that are uh, pushed from QDV directly. And we can perform complex comparison 
like version C compared to the, to the previous version based on different categories. And everything comes from QDB directly. Some opportunities and some risks that are inserted in, into QDB. Uh, Stacy, for yes. me, it's uh, finished. I don't know if uh, someone has uh, any questions. Yes. Does anyone have any questions they'd like to pose to Anthony? I realise that we have gone through that very quickly, uh, given the afternoon is running away on us. Um, but more than happy to take questions now, or also to channel questions through to Anthony offline, um, and to take questions myself personally as well. So we hope that from this presentation, you've got a taste of the power of QDV and BI in terms of the time it can save, the reduction in human error, and the ability to push and pull information between your corporate systems to improve your ability to estimate going forwards, as well as from a perspective of someone who spent time doing hand mapping of tender responses against our own WBS, how you can actually ask for the information in a format that doesn't impose a burden on a tenderer, but simply ask them to map their information to a desired outcome so that it can be automatically imported and then compared within a very short space of time. Taking this approach actually releases a lot of time to do analytics on the data that you've received, plus also go back and ask questions about the data that you've received, rather than losing a lot of valuable time manually compiling data and being left with a short space of window in your tender evaluation period to go and ask questions. So as I said, happy to take questions or happy to take questions offline and channel them through to Anthony as well. So thank you for your time this afternoon. Thank you.